Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to build your first AI agent. This is a beginner's tutorial, so you don't have to have any coding experience, know anything about anything or anything else. For that matter, I will show you everything you need to build this AI agent here in front of you. Now, this AI agent here will be consisting of the typical components of an agent, a model, a memory, and two tools. So we'll be going over each one of these here. And I will also give you some simple explanations of what they do and what they are and why to use them so that at, at the end of this tutorial, you will have a good understanding of what an AI agent is and how to use the different components. So you'll be able to use this AI agent as a base for your own workflows or more complex advanced agents you want to build for yourself. So with that said, let's dive in and start building this. Here I have opened up a new workflow and now we're going to start building the AI agent. So the first step is to add a trigger. Click here and we get this list of triggers. What a trigger does is it executes your workflow. So there's different types of triggers depending on why and how you want to execute the workflow. You have a manual trigger for when you want to just execute the workflow on command by clicking on it. Or you got, for example, on app event when an event happens in an app or on a webhook call, etc. on a form submission and so on. We want to choose on chat message here because we want the AI to be executed when we send it a message. We're going to be chatting with the AI and it's going to do things based on what we write to it. So that's why we choose on chat message here. And we're just going to leave everything as is. So this is going to be the trigger for our workflow. The next step now is to add AI agent. We're going to click on this plus sign here. And here we can search for AI. And we get AI agent there. Click on that. And there are also different types of AI agents you can use depending on your use case. Now for this tutorial, we wanted to focus on using tools. So we're gonna choose a tools agent. And for the prompt source, we're gonna leave it as is. Automatically, you can also define your own prompt otherwise. And everything else looks good. So we're gonna leave it as that. Okay. Now you see that the AI agent here is red as a warning and it says no node connected to required input chat model so there is one required component here and that is a chat model here and you can see that there's an asterisk sign here if i zoom in so that is the sign that this is required and the chat model is basically the brain of the ai agent so an ai agent without chat model is like having a head without a brain so the the chat model that is what is responsible for receiving your message and then generating an output to back to you based on that message. So like when you're chatting with ChatGPT, for example, and you write a message and you get, an, you get a reply, the chat model is what actually does that. Okay, so now let's click here to add a chat model. And here we have different providers. You got Anthropic that provides the cloud models, if you know about cloud. And then you got Google here for Google Gemini, Grok, Mistral, and OpenAI, of course, which provides ChatGPT. You also got Olama models if you want to use local open source models. Now, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to be using Mistral because they have a free tier so that you can easily follow along here. You don't have to set up any credit card or anything like that. So I'm going to click on Mistral here. And here you're going to need to set up your credentials. I already have mine. What you're going to do is create on create new credentials here and then you can click on open docs here and you will get to page that will explain how to set this up it is very simple you just create an account at mistral as you would do on any other service and you create an api key and you copy it and paste it in here it's super simple you you won't you won't have any problems okay and now the model here so we're going to choose a model for it now there's different types of models, smaller models, bigger models. Usually the bigger the model, the smarter it is, but also the more resource intensive and slower it is. For this case, uh, there's a model called Nemo. We're gonna look for that, Mistral Open Nemo. I'm gonna be using this model. This is one of the best newest models they have. It's the best smallest model as of now. So we're gonna use that because it's more than enough for our use case. And now we basically have all the basics of an AI agent. So let's try this out. Click on the chat button here. We'll open up this window. And now let's send this a message. I'm going to say, hi, I am Akram. And we get a response. It says here, hello, Akram. How can I assist you today? Let me know if you need any help. And here at the right side, you can see all the steps it took. So since we only have the model, we haven't added any tools or any other features you only see this step here, which is uh, using the model. So it gets the input here. First, it has the system. 
message. So the system message is like the general prompt you give to an AI agent explaining who it is, for example, or its tasks in general. And this has been provided here by anything or more precisely by Langchain in the background. So you are a helpful assistant. It's a very simple message. And then it gets hu the human message. The human message is the message that we gave to it. So hi, I am Akram. And then here down below, you see the output that it generated for us. Hello, Akram, how can I assist you today? Which is the same that you see here over on the left side. Okay, so now I'm going to tell it, ask it, what is my name? And you see now it went through there and to the model and now it responds. I don't know your name yet. My name is assistant. So even though I just recently gave it my name here, it does not know my name. And the reason for that is that uh, LLMs, these models we work with here, they are inherently stateless. They can't remember anything. They only know what they have been trained on at the time of creation. So they've been trained on a big amount of data. And when they create it, that's all they know, and that's all they can base the replies upon. So in order for it to know about you, we need to help it save and store that information from our previous messages. So that's what we're going to do at the next step here by creating a memory. So let's clear this first, like so. And now let's go and create a memory. To create a memory, we're going to click here. And here we have different types of memories you can give it. Uh, the simplest one that we're going to use here is a window buffer memory. This is the easiest one to start with, but if you're going to use this in production for more serious application, you might want to consider one of the other memories. I have tutorials that will show you how to use both Postgres and Redis chat memory, which are both great memories. So you can find that in the description below. But for this tutorial, we're going to be using this easy window buffer memory. And we're going to leave everything here automatically as is. Now here's an interesting thing here, the context length. So the context length here is how many previous messages it's going to use as context. So the more messages, the slower it can be to reply. And also the more costlier it's going to be because it's going to use the tokens of all for, of each message and use that when it ca calculate the final uh, cost for using this. So if you're using like Mistral, like we're using now, it's no problem. But if you're going to use OpenAI or any other uh, provider that costs money, you might want to consider this. So I'm just going to leave it at default here as five because it's good enough in this case. And now if you try this again and write to it, hi, my name is Akram. Hello Akram. Now if I ask it, what is my name? This time it's going to know my name but it's not going to get it from the model. It's going to get it from the memory. So we see here, it responds, your name is Akram. So how did it do this? Well, the first step was before you, you saw it was only one step. It went directly to the model here, but this time it first starts by going to the window buffer memory and it looks for our previous messages. So if you look at the input here, what is my name? And shows you here, you are helpful. Okay, so we go to output first and we're going to scroll down here. And we're going to open up as JSON. And here it's going to show you my first message here. Hi, my name is Akram. That's going to load. Hello, Akram. And also it's reply. So it uses this before it goes to the model. So it takes this with it as a, con a context. It takes my message and it's reply to me. And then it goes over to the model. And after that, it uses the model to generate a response to me based on the previous messages. So here is the uh, here is the order of messages you can see here. First, this is your helpful assistant, the system message, and then the, my message. Hi, my name is Akram, and then the AI responded, "Hello, Akram, it's nice to meet you. How can I assist you today?" And then my message, "What is my name?" And now the final output here: "Your name is Akram." After that, now it goes to the window buffer memory again. And here it now stores the new list of messages. So we can use it for, for the future, for the next messages. We're going to uh, write to it. Okay, so that's the basics of how a memory works. Now, the next step is to start using some tools. So the first tool we're going to use here is going to be a Wikipedia tool. And I'm going to show you exactly why by an example here. First, let's clear this and clear this as well. And now I'm going to ask it a question here. I'm going to ask it, what is Hurricane Beryl? And it now goes to the model 
and it gets a response. It checks the chat memory as well, and then it gives us a reply. And it talks here about Hurricane Barrel was a tropical cyclone that formed the ocean early 2018, etc., etc. So it's a hurricane from 2018. Some things mentioned here about 2017 and so on. Now, if you go to Google here and search for Hurricane Barrel, you get this one here or this one here from 2024, everything from this year. So why did it reply with an older hurricane that was called Hurricane Barrel? And also, if you google 2018 here it's actually gonna say uh Berlin's caribbean you don't even find anything there was the first atlantic hurricane okay you got something here but it's not much information so why did it get this from 2018 and you know 17 etc instead of getting the most current uh hurricane the reason is if we go back to uh anything here the model it has that that we're using here is a few months old and this hurricane actually occurred recently it actually occurred after this model was created and after the data that we it was trained on and created on so it doesn't know about anything that has happened after that and for that reason it goes to the most recent hurricane it knows about and uses that to reply to us so to get the most recent information uh, factual information we're going to be using wikipedia here as a source for recent information so let's click there on tool and now search for wikipedia here and there's no setup for that we're just gonna connect it like this now if we ask it instead it's gonna go to wikipedia and it's gonna extract the information that's on wikipedia and use that as a context and then generate a reply based on that instead so let's clear this clear this as well now if we're gonna ask it again what is hurricane barrel you see now that it goes to wikipedia first here and then it goes to the mod and generates a reply and now you see the reply we get here hurricane barrel etc and the gulf coast in the late june and early july 2024 it was there so it now it's talking about the same hurricane barrel that we find when we google it and here are the steps. It first goes to the window buffer memory as usual. It looks for information. Then it goes to the cloud here and takes our message. And then after it goes to Wikipedia and uses our message as a query. So it extracts Hurricane Barrel and uses that as a query for Wikipedia. It finds the uh, it finds the article here, you see here. And then it goes to uh, Mistral again. And after it, it uh, generates a reply to us. And then, of course, it goes down to the uh, buffer memory again and saves this as a context for future conversation. So that is how you can get better factual information by using another source. In this case, we used Wikipedia, but there are also other tools you can use for that. Now, the final tool here we're going to test out is Gmail. We're going to tell the agent here to send an email on our behalf just by chatting with it. So let's clear this and click on this plus sign here and search for Gmail. Click on that. And here I already have my Gmail account set up. If you want to know how to create your own credentials for your Gmail account, I have a video in the description below. It'll show you how to do that step by step. And for tool description here, we can just set, uh, leave that set automatically because it will take the description from these uh, settings here that we choose. And resource, we're going to leave that as a message because we're going to send a message and the operation is going to be sent. And then here we have the two and subject and email type. Email type, I'm going to change that to text. And two, I'm going to send this to myself. Spruce.gmail.com. It does not have a sender here and the reason is that it gets the sender from your credentials so since i am giving it the credentials of the same account here it will use that as a sender and then the subject just i don't know test email and the message hi this is from ai agent so that's it for that so now this is connected as well and now we have two tools connected wikipedia and gmail and now based on what we tell it it will know which of these tools it should work with so in this case i'm going to just tell it to send an email send an email 
And now it should know that it should go to the Gmail uh, node. Okay, node execute successfully, but it didn't do that. Okay, maybe I need to be a little bit more precise. So let's say send an email to dev.digispruce digispruce at gmail.com. And this time it seems it understood what to do. Yes. So now you see the list of steps here and it went through Gmail and it sent the email. Now, if I go to my email inbox here, load this, you see we received our email. So they can make this mistake sometimes. Uh, the results of an LLM is never 100% predictable. So uh, if, if, you, if you have issues like this, you might want to test a more a smarter model, a bigger model, or you can also be more precise, write better prompts, etc. So this was the basic AI agent we built. Uh, as you see, we have gone over the model and how to use the memory and some simple tools. You can also build more uh, custom tools yourself by creating your own workflows and connecting them as tools. I've been going over how to do that in future videos. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that. With that said, I uh, hope to see you in the next video. Make sure to leave a like if you found this valuable. Until next time, take care.